Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today has only been in the industry for about a year, but she has already become a viral sensation for making over $250,000 by sleeping with over 100 college guys on spring break. Let's welcome the one and only, the <laughs> daring, the gorgeous, the dewy, Hi. Bonnie Blue. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for coming on. And I feel like I, now I feel like I need to explain why I called you dewy, because you have like such, the first thing yes. I noticed about you is your skin is like insane. Well, a lot of facials, basically. Oh my God, um, what kind of facials? A mixture. <laughs> <laughs> Best of both worlds. Have I been getting the wrong kind of facials? Maybe. <laughs> So, Bonnie, thank you so much for coming on. Um, let's talk, obviously, you have an accent. So yes. let's talk a little bit about, like, where you're from, where you grew up, yes. where you're living now. Okay, so originally from Nottingham in the UK, and I've relocated to Australia, Gold Coast. And, yeah, so my accent's a little all over the place, mm -hmm. for sure. And how long have you lived in Australia? Three years now. And are you living it? Like, 100%. I don't know why everyone doesn't live there. Like... <laughs> The beach lifestyle it is so laid back, so chilled, very outdoorsy. I mean, obviously it depends what you like your hobbies are, but right. it is just beautiful. Like weather averages at like 25, so you never get too sweaty. Do you know what right. I mean? Like you're never too hot or too cold. It's good. Yeah. I have no idea what 25 is because that's Celsius oh, gosh, Fahrenheit. Oh yeah. gosh, But um, I know it's like warm. It's probably like 80s is it's my what guess. It is, sort of like a bit warmer than what it is today. Okay. It's probably like 80s would be my guess. Yeah, because it's like when I was filling in the form, doing the date, that really hurt my head yes. because you do it the other way around. Yes, yes, yeah. we do month, day, year. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's the day. <laughs> you, you say the day, then the month, then the year. You know what? I mean, honestly, that, that does make <laughs> sense. And I feel like there's a lot of things about like the metrics that we use in – um, the United States that don't make sense, like the yeah. fact that we use like inches and then feet and I mean, all people these. People lie about inches anyway, so I don't <laughs> think the inches matter too much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like they're all different, like yeah. measurement. Whereas mm -hmm. like if you use like millimeters and centimeters, they're all like you know, yeah, hundreds and tens and. I don't know why i don't know why americans have to make everything so no. fucking confusing yeah, and i don't understand why you have to hand your bank card in can't you just do apple pay we can e everywhere i've been they've made me hand my bank card in really yeah i don't know if that's because then you have to give it the tip <laughs> oh so, yeah. yeah that's a new thing since covid you know yeah. where before it was like you could pay and now they make you do it through the machine yeah. and then they just add this little like mm. tip factor in there. Yeah. And then they're like, and they always turn the screen to you and they're like, it's going to ask you some questions. Yeah, is this okay? And you sort of feel like, I can't say no now. So I'm going to look all right, dickhead. So you have to say yeah. I know. And even if they literally just got you a soda out of like the fridge. Yeah. Right? Like if they're making and preparing mm -hmm. thing and serving you, I get it. Yeah. But like if it, and it's always pre-selected, like 20%. Yeah, it's already set. Like 20% for me to like give you the soda out of the yeah. fridge. And I'm like, I, I mean, like I yeah, asshole. But also like. <laughs> yeah. The worst ones is when they pop up for like a charity one. Because yeah. you think, well, I can't not donate now. But like yeah. it's forced me to. <laughs> yeah. You know what I do? I mean, of course, nobody's ever asked me why I don't do it. But in yeah. my head, I always say I'm not contributing to that charity because I don't actually know where the money goes. Yeah. And I don't know who's like supporting it. A lot of these are like these very religious, like mm -hmm. Christian foundations. Yeah. And the money isn't necessarily going like all of it's going to the cause that you want. There's a lot of like charities that are real iffy yeah, with the way I they distribute their really money. I really want to get into charity work and start doing a lot more, especially next year. And it's like, I don't just want to sign up. You know, you can just do these charity mm -hmm. courses. I'm like, well, no, because like, 20% is going out, so like it's not going directly mm -hmm. to the people or like mm -hmm. to the cause. Yeah. Because um, if you're running a nonprofit, you still have to pay salaries. Yeah. And you, as like the CEO of a nonprofit or like the you know, founder of a nonprofit, like you can pay yourself an enormous salary. The, yeah. The people at the top of these charities are rich. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, it's better to do it direct. So yeah. I'm like, um, no, thank you. But then you look horrible. <laughs> <laughs> do you watch South Park? No, I've seen clips, but okay. not, I've not watched it. There's this of. one amazing, we're going so fucking off track. <laughs> There's this one amazing clip in South Park where the, um, I think Randy goes into, I think it's Whole Foods. Yeah. And they ask him if he wants to like contribute to a certain charity. Mm -hmm. And he like kind of says no. And then the shopkeeper's like, what? And he's like, no. Oh, and the shopkeeper's no. like, you don't want to contribute to this charity like as loudly as he can. And and Randy's like, no. And like everyone's staring at yeah. him. It's just this. 
it's really yeah, good to see. that is literally me on a database, yeah. <laughs> day to day basis. Yeah. South Park is full of so many truths. <laughs> Anyways, back, back to, to the story. Back to the story. Um, okay, so just a few years ago, you were a newlywed working a nine to five corporate job mm-hmm. in the UK, and now you're an OnlyFans star living in Australia, famous for sleeping with hundreds of men. Yeah. How did that transition happen so rapidly? Um, So when I relocated to Australia, everyone on the Gold Coast seems to be like an influencer or they don't seem to go to work. Like, I don't know if they're a slut like me, but like no one seems to go to work on the Gold Coast. Like you don't really get rush hour traffic. And I was like, what are they doing? (laughs) Like, why aren't they going to work? And either they've got money behind them or they're already in property and stuff. Like I didn't have that, like, unless I was working, like I didn't have like any money. And then when I, obviously when you buy the beach, the last thing you want to do is go and sit in an office, like Monday to Friday, get given 20 days annual leave. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not accepting that anymore. Like I've already made the big move to Australia. The last thing I want to do is just in a way like ruin that by like sitting in an office. And you're also like working every day to make somebody else rich. Yeah. Right? Like you're not really, I mean, I guess it depends on where you work, but like- the but Yeah, most jobs are restricted. Like yeah. you could work really hard one week and it doesn't really pay off or like, I don't know, you're just living by someone else's rules. Like, mm-hmm. and I've just had enough of it basically. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm too good for this. <laughs> <laughs> and when it came to going back into work, I sort of had like a year and a half break. I was like, okay, what, like, what can I do? And I saw on TikTok, people talking about coming. Like, you know, when you go on like porn sites mm-hmm. and you can see like these girls that sort of chat to men one-on-one. Yeah, like a live video, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'll give that a go. And my first week I was in like three to 4,000 AUD. And I was like, wow, like at the time that was absolutely amazing. That was more than I'd ever earned like in recruitment. So I was like, perfect, like this is what I'm gonna do. And because I'd started off like behind closed doors in my bedroom, no one really knew about it. It sort of like eased me mm-hmm. sort of into it. Mm-hmm. And were you just doing like, like what kind of content were you shooting at that point? Um, like a bit of everything. So like anal, vagina, like. Okay, so you were doing like full like masturbation yeah. stuff. Yeah, it okay. wasn't like a, hey, how are you? How's your day? Yeah, you know I mean, okay. well, it started like that, ended right. me bent over sort of thing. Um, <laughs> That's where it always leads. Exactly. <laughs> and but I was like, coming out was fine, but it was like 12 hour days, which I was more than happy to, like I've got a good work ethic, but unless you're sat by the computer, you're not, like you're not earning money. And like mm. when I'd started to do that, my confidence had built up massively and they asked you to make content to add to your profile. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if I'm making videos now anyway, I might as well try OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And I thought it's not gonna take off. Everyone has OnlyFans nowadays. And I I wasn't naive. I knew it just, you don't just upload a sex tape and become rich. Like it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but in a way I was quite lucky. My content sort of took off and people was quite intrigued and interested. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are like incredibly beautiful. Oh, so that's, that's probably- <laughs> Good lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to everyone who's been on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> when I watch it back, I might say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> we have filters now. <laughs> so um, you've said that your husband is actually the only reason you had the confidence mm-hmm. to sign up for OnlyFans. What did he do to inspire that? just like encouraged me to do it. So obviously when I saw these TikToks, people doing come in, I was like, I could never do that. I never have the confidence or like people won't want to watch me. I'm not pretty enough or like I've not got the big boobs and like overly flat stomach and stuff. And he was like, no, like you're beautiful, do it. And you know, sort of, I guess gave me the confidence to to sort of start. Were you surprised by that? Because you know, it's not all that common that a man is willing to encourage their girlfriend to make yeah. money showing mm-hmm. themselves off for other men? I think at the time he was under the impression as well, like neither of us wanted to work a nine to five, like Monday mm-hmm. to Friday. We wanted more out of life and we knew just continuing to go to our jobs, doing the same, you're not gonna break a routine. You're not gonna change if you don't make change. And I think him seeing the potential money I could earn doing this was like a step in that direction. Mm-hmm. So he was fully supportive from that side because of the money and then also was just more than happy for me to give it a go. And at the time I was his and it was just in a bit be- like a bedroom. It was completely separate. So he had no problem with that. Did you guys end up making content together at all? No, so we're actually split up now. Okay. Uh, like nothing to do with OnlyFans, nothing to do with like me in the industry. Um, but no, never made content with them. Okay. 
Um, I mean, you guys were together for almost a decade, right? Yes. Yeah, like, yeah. had you been with many other people before him? No, pretty, like, I'd only slept with five people before getting into this industry. Like, oh, wow. completely. Yeah, let's just say my numbers have rocketed. <laughs> <laughs> before that, genuinely very wholesome, very innocent, just, yeah, never even, like, wouldn't even upload a bikini photos. Like, it was never, never an interest. Do you think that, that that, like, that there was always this, unbridled sexuality kind of living deep inside of you that you were too afraid to tap yeah. into because i mean it's usually not a situation where someone just changes completely yeah. it's usually like it was there but they were too afraid to 100 percent. yeah that. so i've always absolutely loved sex i love pleasing love receiving it and like always loved the idea of like people watching and like doing only fans but just hadn't had the confidence to do it and just sort of hadn't hadn't taken the leap because obviously when you do it loads of judgment comes with it and i just sort yeah. of wasn't ready yeah like previously to i guess offset that judgment yeah i mean i've said so many times i feel like the most damaging thing about the adult industry is the stigma that comes with it not mm -hmm. like specifically the industry itself yeah and and you've received like a ton of yeah, blowback sure. since mm -hmm. you've done your whole um <laughs> Your little, uh, what's it called? Your schoolies? Yes, yeah, so that content. was the first one. Schoolies was the first. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get to that. I don't yeah. want to jump ahead. So where did you, when did you shoot your first like scene with another girl or guy? Um, that would have been in June last year. So not even a year ago yet. Wow. And I can remember, oh, actually, no. My first one was a week before that was like an orgy. They was like two girls, three guys. And... We was all fairly no like looking back i cringe like i i don't think i could even watch the video anymore like it's still on my page but all of you guys were new fairly no like we either been in like a few months or like we was none of us was established and i can remember like to start with no one was making a noise we we're basically <laughs> having like sex in silence and i was like what's going <laughs> off like and i can remember being like sorry are we are we making a noise like what are we like what are we doing <laughs> It was so weird. And then one of the guys halfway through was like, oh, I don't want my face on camera now. So like the video has now got like a massive blurred part all over his face. And obviously he's moving around. And when oh, he's sucking God, out tits, track that it's them so out. Like tits are blurred out. And yeah, look, looking back on it, it's a disaster. <laughs> Honestly, if anyone's brought that video, you were like, you need a refund. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so funny how like, you're like halfway through a scene, you're like, come to think of it i don't want my face in this like it's a little yeah it's late, a little dude. bit late like what's going off um but yeah it was all so new to the industry and yeah it was it was weird it was like my first scene was definitely one to remember <laughs> wow that's insane so um you specialize in creating realistic content what does that mean to you yeah so i mean obviously partly after that scene i started to realize even you know the ones that aren't like professional porn shoots even only fans is so set up and it's so fake and it's not genuine and when like you're a subscriber watch that you can tell and it's like my whole social media is very genuine i'm quite down to earth and it's like i don't want that to be portrayed on social media then you go on my only fans and it's completely fake and overly edited mm -hmm. so yeah i was like i want to make realistic content and loads of subscribers when they first started watching my videos said they couldn't relate it's like i couldn't imagine myself in your videos mm -hmm. and it's like if you watch a movie if you've got connections with that person or you've you know grew up in the same neighborhood or you have similarities you're able to connect a lot more and you find it i don't know a lot more emotional a lot more moving mm -hmm. so it's like i want to portray that the exact same in my like only fans videos mm -hmm. so i started using i guess just random ordinary day-to-day -day people mm. in my videos and sometimes it barely last nine seconds and <laughs> sometimes he'd give me a good ride so it was a mixture <laughs> uh there was an assistant that i used to work with that used to always say like i wish we could just start a website called normalguys.com yeah where it was just like guys with regular sized penises mm -hmm. regular bodies yeah. and it sounds like that's that's kind of that what you like, do yeah the people that watch your videos they are your normal people it's right. like my subscribers aren't a big like group of porn stars watching my videos it's mm -hmm. normal day-to-day -day people mm -hmm. and they want to see how i'd react you know sometimes if someone doesn't last that long or sometimes if they're a bit nervous or they don't get hard straight away like it's all normal and it's all part yeah. of pleasure and you can still enjoy sex just because the person doesn't get hard straight away mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't then have a good time mm -hmm. but sometimes porn's portrayed you know you get hard straight away, you yeah. finish after a good amount of time and the angles all work well and the transitions move smoothly and it's, 
tell me it's not the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely, I mean, that's the kind of porn I shoot. Yeah. Um, but I love that you do something different because I think that, you know, when people always say porn is this one thing, I always try to argue it's not this one thing. It's so yeah. many different things. But mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know where to find different kinds of porn. So you can have your super polished, like, fantasy yeah. porn, which is what I'm all about. Like, mm -hmm. I'm all about lying to you motherfuckers. Like, yeah. <laughs> I am not about reality. But then there's, like, someone like you that creates this real this very real unpolished content. Yeah, and I think sure. that's wonderful because mm -hmm. there should be something for everybody because everyone's looking for something different. Everyone wants a wank, do you know what I mean? They just want yeah. to wank to something yeah. that's and some people relatable. Just, yeah, some people just yeah. want to wank differently. Exactly. You know? <laughs> But it's spit, but it's box of tissues and they watch what they want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Have you did you get any feedback from some of your subscribers that they really appreciate that you use like these normal guys that because I yeah. know that a lot of guys who do watch porn and maybe, you know, haven't had a lot of partners mm -hmm. or haven't had sex education and, and kind of see porn as like, yeah. you know, an example of what sex is supposed to be and what intimacy is supposed to be, have unrealistic expectations. Yeah from women also like from themselves like For what sure. their dick should look like what they should look like mm -hmm. how long they should last and all these yeah. things do you get feedback from your subscribers saying like thank you for helping me not feel like i need to be this like superman with a nine inch dick oh 100 percent like people that like, oh my god i didn't think you would sleep with someone like that or oh i didn't know that happens occasionally like because sometimes when you change in positions like sometimes it gives a little bit like you can be soft if you're faffing around and stuff and people are like oh I thought that was just me and stuff mm -hmm. and it's honestly educational like it's mm. and especially when you do the like a film with like 18 years old mm -hmm. when they're like friends and stuff are watching it they can really understand and it's like educational like one of the guys tried to finger me in the ass and I was like oh like no I'm like not that into that and other pe other girls sometimes when they watch porn they think if a guy goes to do something you just have to accept it and stuff mm -hmm. and it's like no you don't, but it doesn't ruin the sex, like sexual mood. Yeah, you can still go along with it, but you can communicate whilst you're having sex. And I think a lot of my videos show that, that yeah, you, you can talk and you can say to a guy, "Oh no, a little bit to the left," you know, put a finger in yeah. and stuff. Like you can tell them what you like. You don't have to just sort of take it, and the guy can take you know feedback as well. Yeah, no, I think that's so important because you know communication between sex partners is mm. is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. Because first yeah. of all so many people are raised to not talk about sex mm, at all, it's right? It's so taboo. It's so, so taboo. It's such a dirty subject. And then mm -hmm. we get this idea that everything is just supposed to work out perfectly in the moment, right? Yeah. It's like that, it's almost like the, that Disney movie thing where like- It's meant to be perfect. They pick you up, throw you onto the bed. Yeah, they and, take your like, clothes off. You know, the, the princess, the idea of like, oh, I'm a princess yeah. and going to rescue me and everything's going to be mm -hmm. perfect. We're going to live happily ever yeah. after. Like they don't, there's none of like the exploration of like, the messy in betweens and even in porn, you know, yeah. like we do these big consent talks before we shoot a scene, but we don't yeah. incorporate that into the scene. Like people don't see that behind the scenes. That's yeah, why. So like behind the scenes, are you happy with this? Do you want yes, this? Like exactly. that's all edited out. Exactly. So, you know, like if a girl, if a guy sticks a finger up a girl's ass in a yeah. scene, it's because like we, that we was agreed know. upon yes. beforehand. Yeah, yeah. And we might have even cut before that and like yeah. given her some lube. So it looks like it just went right up there, but like mm -hmm. we never show that. Yeah. You know, generally in professional porn. So a lot yeah. of people think that, you know, all of these things are supposed that to be That we're automatic. just instantly wet and it just yes. instantly, yeah. Yes. That too, that's also an issue because women take like longer to warm up than men yeah, do. Yeah, for sure, 100%. So um, I want to talk about your uh, your filming with the 18 year olds at, at schoolies, yes. which you're going to have to <laughs> also explain to people yes, what that sure. is. But let's take a quick commercial break first, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about that and all the controversy. So stick around, guys. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. It's your host, Holly, back with another quick break to talk about something that can seriously up your game in the bedroom. You know I'm all about confidence and performance, both on set and off. So let's get into it. Blue Chew, of course. Blue Chew is a unique service that delivers chewable tablets with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis straight to your door. No awkward conversations, no waiting in line, just effective results when you need them. And trust me, these little chewables work fast. Whether you're dealing with occasional performance anxiety or just want to make sure that things go well, Blue Chew has you covered. It's all done online so you don't have to worry about any uncomfortable face-to-face -face interactions. Just sign up, consult with a licensed medical provider, and boom, your prescription arrives in discreet packaging straight to your door. 
And because you're one of my fabulous listeners, Blue Chew has a special offer for you. Try Blue Chew for free. Head over to bluechew.com and use promo code Holly at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code Holly to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. Don't let anything hold you back from the confidence and performance that you deserve. Give Blue Chew a try today and feel the difference. Your partner will. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. All right. So, Bonnie, um, let's talk about, uh, you know, the big controversy yes. that you face. So first, explain to my audience who's not familiar with the term, what mm-hmm. is schoolies? Okay. So schoolies is everyone's just finished school, like high school, and they tend to be fresh 18 and they go partying for two weeks mm-hmm. on the Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like two weeks, let the hair down, party, they're away from parents and just have fun, basically. Yeah, yeah I did that. Um, my boy, we we have like a we have a similar thing. I don't I don't know yeah. what we call it. I guess we call it like a graduation party. Yeah. Like my class went to Cancun. Um, my boyfriend and I went to Amsterdam and hired nice. sex workers. <laughs> 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 I'm having my first threesome. That's a story for another day. <laughs> um, so yeah, so tell us about um, how you come into this. Yeah. So at the time, I was a full service sex worker as mm-hmm. well. So I had escort and page up mm-hmm. and. Like most OnlyFans girls, you get messages all the time like, oh, can I film with you? You know, you can have sex with me and I'll let you film with your OnlyFans. And at the time, I only filmed content with other OF creators. Like mm-hmm. filming with just random people was a was a no-go. Mm-hmm. And loads you of these- You get all the paperwork too. Yeah, for it's sure. Kind of in the ass. Yeah, and they never know what they're doing. And it's just, I was like, no, it's just going to make terrible content. Yeah. And loads of the fresh 18-year-olds were like, oh, I can't afford you, like to pay for you, but, you know, can I have sex with you? And you could put on your OnlyFans. And at the time I was like, no, that's not how it works. But then I was thinking like the 18 year olds, one that is a massive search category in porn, it's like really popular. And a lot of 18 year olds, they're my subscribers. So that's my sort of target audience. So when I thought about it, I was like, why would I not make content with them? Because that is my target audience. And if I sit with one of their friends, they're gonna talk about it, they're gonna socialize and it's gonna spread. Then they're gonna wanna subscribe to me only fans. Um, so I was like, stuff it, I'll sleep with them. And it's perfect. Most of them was virgins, obviously the fresh 18, they're excited and they want to have a good time. Wow. So tell me a little bit about like some of those experiences, like overall, um, did they struggle? Were you surprised? Think, yeah. So my first scene, I think I was more nervous than they was <laughs> <laughs> because I was letting them into my home and I'd only worked with established content creators. Yeah. I hadn't even been in the industry that long myself. And I was right. like, what am I doing? Like, this is unheard of. I've not heard of or spoke to anyone that's made content with random people, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah, neither have I actually. Yeah, off the streets, especially like, you know, 18 years old. Um, I know it was brilliant. My first scene was two guys. He brought his friend for like moral support. And I started the cameras as soon as they came in. So you see them signing the consent forms. I had to obviously do the ID checks. And then I just got them onto my sofa and it went from there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, did he, did the guy just keep like kind of looking over at his friend and being like, I can't believe this like was happening. Like high five in each other. It's like, I can't believe this was real. And especially because they was like the first people. So they hadn't heard, they'd heard the rumors that mm-hmm. I was going to do it, but they hadn't heard of anyone I'd actually slept with at this point. Mm-hmm. So I think they was more shocked it was true. And they just couldn't like, literally couldn't believe it. Yeah. But bless them, they was nervous. <laughs> Oh, I'm like sure. even when they was holding the ID, they're shaking. I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> but obviously, at any point, like they can change their mind, and I make that clear. Like consent can change at any point. Whether you, you want to change your mind now that you're in the room, whether you want to change it halfway through the scene, or we could finish the you know the scene, and then you decide no, you want to withdraw consent. I'm like, that's fine. Like as long as you feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time I made content that wasn't focused towards the camera. Mm-hmm. I wasn't stressing about the angles. I wasn't stressing about, you know, is there a close up of that dick going inside mm-hmm. me? It was more, a, I put two tripods up and then I gave them a camera to film POV, especially if they wasn't having their face in it. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, I don't even know if this video is going to be good because usually, you know, mid scene, you're getting up, you're checking the cameras, you make sure the angles are good. You've got someone telling you if the lighting's okay. Mm-hmm. And obviously with this, it was more down to to the 18-year-olds filming mm-hmm. the sex scene. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was going to 
you know, hopefully sell. And like sometimes they'd zoom in on my head or it'd be they'd put the camera down, they've got distracted and they, they've not even filmed half of it, but that was okay. Yeah. Did you keep those parts in or did you take yeah, them Yeah, so loads of parts. You see the, the camera goes down or you yeah. see close-ups of my head, but like that was just like a normal, genuine like sex tape, do you know yeah. I mean? like, that is what happens. Like an 18 year old isn't going to be professional. Do you know yeah. I mean? like, they are going to be nervous and they're not going to know, you yeah. know how to film. Yeah, I mean, most people just in general, Yeah, right? Like if you don't have experience doing mm. that, and especially like having sex with somebody on camera is hard enough. And then if you're holding the camera too, yeah, like, that's not Honestly, easy. I say credit to any of the 18 year olds or anyone I film with that one come alone because People talk the talk. I've had loads of groups. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come and I'm going to rail you. All my mates are going to fuck you tonight. It comes to it. Loads of them bail because they get too nervous and stuff. <laughs> so when a guy turns up by himself and he's clearly nervous, I think hats off to you because you've come into a room, you know I'm experienced, you know I'm filming it, and you still come. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I think it's brilliant and they walk away with so much confidence. Like, oh, I love that. If they manage to make me come, they're going to walk away like with so much confidence that like they're going to make another like young person that's like unexperienced in the bedroom come. Yeah. And still to this day, I get text messages like, hey, Bonnie, like, could you give me advice? Or this happened recently. How can you make it sound the best sex ever? Yeah. I love so, that. So like exactly. you kind of develop these little like relationships with them mm, even after yeah. the fact. Yeah. That's really sweet. Yeah, it's pretty cute. Are there, have there been any bad experiences with any of them? Um, I'd say a few have been like overly rough. Mm -hmm. I think that's more they're trying to whip out some new tricks. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? They've watched some porn beforehand and they think, I'm going to try this. Or mm -hmm. they try and start being adventurous for the first time. And it's like, no, just do what you're used to and mm -hmm. do what you enjoy. Like, that's the main thing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, like, just with pulling hair, like, I enjoy my hair being pulled, but there's a certain way to pull your hair, mm -hmm. like, in the bedroom. And sometimes, because they've watched it in porn, and it looks sometimes important overly rough, but mm -hmm. it's not you, the guy knows and they've been trained mm -hmm. and they've pulled girls hair multiple times. So they know how to pull it. So it looks good on camera, mm -hmm. but so it's not so forceful and hurtful to the girl in person. And they don't know that. So sometimes when they pull my hair and stuff, I'm like, I have to say, oh, like, oh don't pull it so hard or, you know, be a little bit careful. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say there's been any. What's the right way to pull a girl's hair? Like, like, I think like you... just make sure you get like a good chunk. Do you know what yeah. I mean? like, just make sure you pull it where sometimes they'll like just hold like a tiny bit and like try and pull yeah. you up. Or like if you're giving them a blowjob, they're trying to then pull your hair up. Yeah. Like, just like a small part. And it's like, no, you're, you need to pull like a bigger part. Otherwise it's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bigger chunk. And also yeah. too, I will say that like in porn, a lot of times, like one of the visual tricks that we do is that the guy holds the hair, right? And he'll look like he's pulling, but the girl is pulling is pushing yeah. her head back so she's making it look like he's pulling her hair yeah. but he's kind of just more holding it yeah. and she's doing that doing that and yeah. like he's keeping the tension mm -hmm. but he's not like pulling it he's back all the way it, yeah like she's kind of you know and then yeah. also too like there's sometimes some girls don't want their hairs being pulled. Mm, for sure a lot of times it's because they have extensions yeah no you know? i'm always like yeah no extensions yeah just don't yank it <laughs> so um how many did you end up sleeping with School years um, was only 32. So okay. That was like a nice warm up. Okay. <laughs> How many, was it like every day, multiple guys a day? So the first week, so school years is two weeks. Yeah. The first week I was still unsure. I was like, do I do this or not? Like, because I knew it was going to cause a lot of backlash. Mm -hmm. And I was obviously, like I said, still new to the industry and hadn't heard of people doing it. So I was like, fuck, like, do I really commit to filming with these 18 year olds? Mm -hmm. And the more I thought about it, I was like, I genuinely can't see a negative to this mm -hmm. um so that 32 videos was basically in eight like eight nine days oh wow yeah. so you did do like multiple scenes a day yeah did yeah. that get it's funny actually I'm, I'm asking like did that hurt or get sore but you're probably like first of all i'm sure the scenes are shorter than they would be like that's with the a thing. professional photographer yeah. where the dicks aren't like these monster cocks yeah some of them are literally tiny some of them are like that some of them are surprised you know and was good size and quite thick but it's if you used to film like five professional porn scenes scenes today you're going to be sore they tend to have big dicks they're thick and the scenes go on for a long time because mm -hmm. it's a lot of stop starting mm -hmm. with these scenes like my shortest video was nine seconds like i didn't even get the dick in my pussy like as the dick hit my lip the guy finished <laughs> so i was completely fine that you know that scene didn't even Did get you post that yes 
you posted a nine second scene? Yeah, so on that particular <laughs> one, I did, I added it to all the ones. I did, oh, this is what I got up to in 24 hours. Okay. I posted multiple ones. So you did do a compilation. Yeah. So all the short scenes ended up in a compilation. Yeah, they ended up in like a, look what I got up to. <laughs> I mean, because it's still entertaining. People are still intrigued by it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, w- were there any guys that showed up that you were really like not? Okay. So, if someone shows up and you're really yeah. not attracted to them, how do you manage that? Um, lube. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Or you know, get them to lick you out. Do you know what I mean? Get them to get you wet. Close your eyes. You know. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can choose it, whoever it is, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Close your eyes, imagine it's someone else. But um, like, no, there were some guys that I personally wasn't attracted to. Some of them blessed my braces, those sort of spots and quite short and just not my type in general. But it was always fun, do you know what I mean? It was always mm-hmm. pleasurable. But mm-hmm. yeah, they weren't necessarily, if I was at a bar, would I have brought them home? Probably not. Yeah. Um, but you're like, you're doing a profession. Yeah, it's like, it's different and you, it was more, um, I wanted to give them a good experience. Like That's they did was, give me a good experience, yeah. but it was more, I was more focused on them having a good time. Yeah. Basically. Well, I mean, that also probably comes from your background as an escort, right? Yeah. Like you're there to like please men and like, mm-hmm. you know, make them feel good and, yeah. and give them a good experience. Yeah. It's like when I first started escorting, I'd always say like, can you send me a selfie? Can you send me a photo? But then I gave up because honestly, it'd go like a Sahara desert down there. If I've already seen her <laughs> face before the booking, I'll be like, I ain't turning up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's better, turn up take the money and then just think, get it done. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes like someone's not attractive in person, but then you meet them and they have like a great personality and yeah. that changes things. Mm-hmm. Or they're good with their tongue. You're like, you know what? Like yeah. some of the guys that have made me finish, I'm like, I would never expect it. Mm-hmm. I've had like good looking people that I've gone on dates with that I haven't been able to come with. Yeah. And then some of my escort clients that I would say are like a four out of 10, they've made me come harder than my dates. I'm like, how? Like, how does that work? (laughs) It's probably because they are making up, you know, sometimes guys who are like incredibly attractive just rely on being, like I remember I dated this one guy once who was like so good looking. He was like model, Mm -hmm. incredible body, great penis. Yeah. So boring in bed. Yeah. And I think it's because he was like, well, I'm like this God. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I don't have to do anything. You think you're going to come just by looking at him. Yeah. 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 It's just like, you know, the people that don't have all of those, you know, physical assets, Mm -hmm. um, you know, find other ways to make, you know, you you make up for it in other ways. Personality, you're funny. You're like, you know, you're, you're good at eating someone out. Yeah. What would you do with the guys who had like really small penises? Like, how did you manage that? And did you get... Like, did you get a lot of like, oh God, I'm so sorry, it's so small. Like, were guys like yeah, apologizing a lot? Like, oh my God, you know, I'm not, I'm not like the other people you film with. Or people would often say like, do you have to have a certain size dick? And I'm mm-hmm. like, no, like, it's not like, it's realistic. So if your dick's small, then that's fine. Like, that is the, you know, the video I'll make. Uh, with smaller dicks, I'd probably say I don't ride because... Mm-hmm gonna pop out yeah it's gonna be a little bit hard and like if you're going trying to go up and down it's just gonna come out yeah, so yeah the guys with the smaller dicks and i say this to anyone with a smaller dick like get on top of the girl do you know what i mean get our legs back because then you're gonna have like a deeper penetration mm-hmm. with that smaller dick um and like sometimes like doggy but get really bent down do mm-hmm. you know what i mean because if you're just doing like doggy like cute little cat pose sort mm-hmm. of one by the time they're like sort of stomachs hitting your ass, their dick's not going to be mm-hmm. sort of like properly going in. Mm-hmm. So, so you're like ass up, face down. Yeah, like properly face down. Yeah. Um, and they're sort of the like go to positions. Yeah. Obviously, if they want to try a position, like I'm more than happy to do it. It's just sometimes if you have got like a really small dick, you need to know your mm-hmm. know positions mm-hmm. and be good with your fingers. Did you try? <laughs> like giving blowjobs? Like how how does a blowjob work in that situation? Yeah, yeah, so I'd give the blowjobs, so you mean like with the smaller dicks? Mm-hmm. Just would like pull their skin back a little bit and just like obviously like suck the dick from like what they is and stuff. But like you're just not doing that over the top, like licking up and down the dick. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Like because you can't, it's so not there. it'd be more like the dick would be in my mouth and I'd be moving my tongue around mm-hmm. sort of in there. Mm-hmm. And I tend to just do a lot of ball play with them. Yeah, I was just gonna ask that. Yeah. And then, um, and then you would find that, and then they would, are, are those the guys that eat you out the most? The ones with the smaller penises? Like, do they try harder? I'd say I had a mixture, because I remember this one guy with a small dick, I'd been giving him a blowjob for a long time, 
And then I was doing it with my friend and I said like, oh, do you want her to sit on your face whilst I suck you off? And he's like, no, I'm not into licking pussy. <laughs> you're I'm like, you you better cheeky start. little shit. Like, <laughs> one, you're barely gonna fuck me. I'm currently sucking your dick and you're not even gonna lick our pussy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would I would say as a whole, like the guys with smaller dicks, they do make the effort to yeah. lick you out or like do a lot more play beforehand. Yeah. So in your personal life, like, yeah. you know, for, for a man that you would want to date, mm -hmm. um, does penis size matter? Because, you know, that's such a like a yeah. big topic for so many um, people. Yes, it does. But then if they was amazing, like, I do, it's so hard. Like there's no yes or no answer. If they had a really small dick and didn't lick you out, it'd be a no-go. Yeah. Like, because otherwise, where am I getting my pleasure from? Yeah. My preference in dick would be not overly thin, but like seven inches and not not like super girthy, but like mm -hmm. in like a nice, like a nice dick, but not, mm -hmm. don't mean not ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, they just have to understand pleasure. That's the main thing. Like you can come from people just rubbing you over your pants. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be ridiculously out there sex. It's just, they'd have to understand how to pleasure. Yeah. So um, after you did this, uh, yeah. your success with schoolies, you went and did spring break, right? Yes. So tell us about that. So spring break, you probably know about, about more than spring break than yeah. I do to be fair. Um, but I knew loads of Americans went there, similar situation. They was either on break, they'd finished school and they're going there to ha party and have fun. Mm -hmm. So I went to the hotel that most spring breakers go to in Cancun, had like put some social media out beforehand, some TikToks, some Instagram, say, hey, this is where I'm going. I'm going to be staying at this hotel for like two to three weeks. Like, come and find me if you want to make a, a sex video, basically. And I had no idea how it was going to go down because I didn't really have a US audience at this point. I'd brought like business cards with me because I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to hand out business cards for the first few days to introduce myself because no one's going to know mm -hmm. like who I am or like what like what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. But no, it was the complete opposite. As soon as I got there, everyone was like, God, you've been circling our group chats for ages. You're the girl that fucks people, aren't you? Um, and yeah, from day one, I was able to get four videos in. So wow, it was good. Busy. Did you ever feel unsafe at all? Um, no, not really. There was one night in particular, these group of guys showed up to my room and like they wouldn't leave and they didn't speak English. So I couldn't film with them because I couldn't even explain like the consent form and how it works. And they literally took like camp outside my hotel room. Like they were just sat there. Like they was not moving. Like two guys were leaned up against the door. One of them was stood in the hallway. And I was like, fuck, okay, this is, do you know what I mean? Because I don't know who they are or like Did you have anyone else with you? I had my friend in my room as well, Leilani. I was both sat there and like we doing that more giggle panic. Do you know what I mm -hmm. mean? We're sort of like, fuck, mm -hmm. <laughs> like what do we do? Um, but yeah, I think after like two, three hours, like they did eventually leave. Mm. Wow. Um, but yeah. That's that's kind of nuts. I'd be I'd be a little bit nervous about that, to be honest. Yeah, but everyone's like surprisingly respectful because they're getting something out of it. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they're excited and they get to know you and they get to know a more personal you. So mm -hmm. they want to give you respect and they want to give you a good time mm -hmm. as well. So everyone was super respectful. Like if I ever had photos with people, they'd be like, oh, it's okay if I touch your ass. Is it, you know, okay if I touch you here? And it's like, yeah. That's mm -hmm. absolutely fine. Yeah. But I was getting like my tits out for their photos. I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'll be naked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was the guys that was more respectful, I guess, than me. <laughs> <laughs> so after shooting um, the spring break stuff, yeah. the schooly stuff, mm -hmm. did you get a lot of backlash? A lot. Yeah. So much hate. What um, was like the main um, kind of, you know, argument against what you did? That I'm a groomer that I'm grooming these, mm. these sort of like children, as they mm -hmm. say. Um, How old are you? 25 now. And you were 24 at the time? Yeah, 24 at the time. Yeah, you're and- really not that much older. No, and the biggest thing, like everyone has like an age gap. Everyone's got some sort of yeah. an age gap. And you are stupid as a parent if you think an 18 year old doesn't want to sleep with a porn star. Mm -hmm. Like it's ridiculous. It's like, how can you even listen to that 18 year old sleeps with a porn star. Why is it I'd be grooming them? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like then I've got no interest to groom them. I've got multiple videos and it just baffles me when people think I must have to groom these children is what they say into mm -hmm. filming videos with me. 
Yeah. They queue up down my hallway. Do you know what I mean? Like they want to fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> so like they approach me. I never sort of go up to people like, hey, please come back to my room. I need you to film a video with me. Like mm -hmm. they message me through social media. They know what I'm about. These multiple articles, my Twitter shows a lot more, you know, of what I get up to. And they can see that beforehand. Like it's not a surprise when they get to my room and I say, actually, I'm going to film it or, oh, I'm going to make you do this OnlyFans video. Like it's down to them. If they're choosing and they're consenting, I really can't see why people have an issue. Yeah. It's it's one of like those, you know, topics that come up a lot, like what is too young to get into porn? Mm. And then it's interesting, right? Because it's like these guys aren't, they're doing a porn scene, but like are they really putting them out themselves out there in a way that like a porn star does? Yeah. You know, she, she's not really. No, right? they don't have to do the social media. They're not like, it's very different like to filming a video with me to classing yourself mm -hmm. as like a porn star. And mm -hmm. their names are never mentioned. If they don't want to show their face, they don't have to show their face. Like they have control over what they want to go out. Mm -hmm. Some people don't want the clips on Twitter. Some people are happy for things to go on Instagram. And it's like, they've got full control of what goes out. And at any point, and it's made clear to them, if you change your mind and you want something removed, like that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's a tough question because I know that there's a lot of people who think like, you know, and this is even just like getting into porn in general yeah. and like the age of consent. They're like 18 is too young. It should be older. But it's like, if we have a, as a society and like the government and everyone, mm -hmm. we've decided that like 18 is legal yeah. age, then 18 is legal age. Yeah, it's like when people come at me for the, that being too young, it's like, you've got an issue with the law. It's nothing to do with yeah. me. If you're saying I can't fuck an 18 year old, go to someone else with that problem because yeah. that's not my problem. And it baffles me how we let 18 year olds drive and they can go to the army and do everything else, but you yeah, say they, can they go, can't they, put their they dick can, in me. Yeah, they can literally, go to war yeah. and get blown up. Yeah, but they can't apparently fuck me on camera. But they can't have sex with you. No. Yeah, it's it's a little bit. Yeah. People are always like, sex is always like that one thing that, you know, everybody's so So to be, but everyone about. has it. It's yeah. just, and this is like the biggest thing I want to change is how it is so taboo. You can't talk about it. And like, you don't have to be overly open, but the ones that do want to be open about it, don't look down on them or don't judge them for wanting to talk about it. Like it is completely fine and completely normal. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you're going to do this every year? You're going to go back to like schoolies and do this? Oh, yeah. So I can't wait. I'm, I think I'm more excited than what they are. <laughs> like, <laughs> so the next thing I'm doing is freshers in September. It's mm -hmm. absolutely same concept, but just in the UK. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be back for schoolies again this mm -hmm. year and spring break again in March next year. Do you think that there's ever going to be like an age where that's going to feel like it's, yeah. it's not, it's, you're like, I'm too old to do this anymore? Yeah, for sure. I don't think it's going to come around just yet. Um, yeah, I mean, I just can't see it stopping anytime soon, but I think maybe when I got to 30, I think I've got another five years. <laughs> I mean, 30 is still young. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but I just think. You'll you'll know when you feel it, right? Yeah. Like, it'll, it'll make like, sense at the thing, like, people always say, oh, does sex become a chore? Do I not like it? And it's like, no, my whole thing's about enjoyment. I have fun and it's pleasurable. So when it doesn't become pleasurable, when I stop having fun, that's when I'll know to stop. But until then, yeah, no. Yeah. Do you, has any of this backlash like affected your mental health in any way or do you just feel, you know, like you really don't care yeah. what anybody says or has, has there been some hurtful comments? I think they reached a time like loads of the articles was getting like millions and millions of views and loads of comments and I was like, fuck, like I'm getting a lot of hate, but it can't ever be hurtful or bother me when all the comments are from such ignorant people mm. when they're like, oh, what if they're not consenting? What if they're not of legal age? So it's like their hate comments are based on what if. Mm -hmm. And it was like, how can I be how can I be hurt by that? Because they are consenting, they are of legal age. So I never got affected by the comments because their comments wasn't relevant. Do you know what I mean? Like if someone starts making personable hate comments, then I can understand. But when it's all what if, I think how can I ever be affected? Yeah. And um, I think that, that that there's so many people that don't understand how the adult industry works yeah. and believes that it's all like illegal activity. Mm -hmm. Everybody in it is, is sex trafficked. Nobody's consenting because, yeah. you know, the mainstream media still very much portrays it as like this dark, seedy sure. underbelly yeah, of the, yeah. you know, of the entertainment industry. And like, you know, everybody's, we're all having sex in like dark yeah. basements and like mm -hmm. nobody really wants to be there and everyone goes home and like cries. And, yeah. And it's, 
generally it's i mean there's always there's exceptions to every rule of there's course, people who yeah. get into the adult industry that you know they don't belong or they were course like this of course like everything happens everything yeah. that could happen in the world happens at some For point sure. within yeah. you, right but like overall like it's not like that but there's still yeah. like a strong misconception that that it's like you know just filled with like victim it's interesting yeah. though too like <clears throat> because so often you know, we paint women as the victims, right? Yeah. Like, and 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 this is like the opposite. You're getting so, like yeah. the men are the victims. I got thousand thousand hate comments going. What if that was a guy? What if that's the guy? And it's like, well, one, I'm not a guy. And if it was a guy, that's a different scenario. And th if that was girls, they're still consenting and choosing yeah. it. So that's also not wrong. But like, people was having a go at me saying, oh, society's fucked because if that was a guy, they'd be in prison. No, no, no they wouldn't. whether it's a girl or a guy doing it, we would not be in prison because it is legal. Like yeah. people was not understanding. They was like, oh, that girl's going to be in prison. And it, God, if that was a guy, they'd be like stoned to death and everything else. And it's like, no, like how would that work? Because it is legal. So it's like, are you that stupid? You don't <laughs> yeah. understand. Like, And also like there's so much porn out there with like 18 year old girls and like older men, like the yeah. stepfather porn, like, oh my God. It's like the most search category, like yeah. 18 year olds. And it's like, not only do I enjoy this, but it's a business. Like I wouldn't have this business if it wasn't for understanding how things work and how the porn industry sort of like works. An 18 year old is is highly searched. So why would I not capitalize mm -hmm. on that age group? Mm -hmm. um, so does your family know what you do? And if so, how have they handled the publicity? Yeah, so they know. I was always gonna tell them, but I'd only been in the industry, I think a few weeks and someone leaked like a video to them. Mm -hmm. And at that point, once you've seen your daughter from that many angles, like there was no denying it was me. <laughs> I was like, mom, that was me in that video. <laughs> and he was shocked. Um, Cause like I said, my background was very corporate. It's very reserved. So it was never, you never would have thought I would have sort of taken the step into OnlyFans and porn, but they absolutely love it now. They want to be in TikToks all the time. Really? Always, yeah. Were you surprised uh, by that reaction or? My family's always been supportive. Mm -hmm. They adore me and like most parents, they just want me to be happy. Mm -hmm. And they could see the shift of how happy I was when I left, you know, working in an office job, being restricted to now traveling and living the most, for me, the most beautiful life. And they just want to support that. Do you know what I mean, they perhaps sort of chose, chose this industry if they could, but when they see the benefits and how much fun I have, how could they not sort of be happy for me? Yeah, I mean, look, I don't think any parent or family member ever you know, like wishes that their child got into the sex industry just because we don't, we're like, you know, not comfortable seeing family yeah. members in a sexual way, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just like how we're all They thought I'd been programmed. forced into it to start with. There was like, if someone asked you to go into this, are you yeah. in trouble for money or something? Like, has something happened? It's like, no, you don't have to have troubled background or have some sort of issue to want to get into the sex industry. Mm -hmm. You just have to be somebody who maybe enjoys sex and yeah. likes being an exhibitionist. Yeah, or everyone thinks you've got daddy issues. Everyone's yeah. like, God, your dad not, must not be in your life. Or God, like on the hate comments, it's like, oh, dads, please stay in your daughter's life. It's like, mm -hmm. my dad is in my life completely. Like mm -hmm. you do not need daddy issues to fuck on camera. Like <laughs> you can be completely normal. Yeah, I see that a lot. Like, oh, her, you know, her, her daddy must be proud. Her mm -hmm. father must be proud. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's always just kind of like a, yeah, like my dad is so proud. Like obviously, he doesn't watch any of the videos, but like yeah. any news articles, he still has a look. Like he gets them all printed out. <laughs> Anything I could do, like my photo shoots that aren't naked, they've got them all around the house. Yeah. And yeah. it was funny because I did a scene with Kieran recently. Oh, okay. And Kieran's originally from Derby and so yeah. is my dad. And they sort of had a similar background. So I was like, I said to Karen, I was like, you might actually know my dad. So I phoned my dad after the scene. I'd still got Karen's cum on my face, but it's <laughs> fine. I'm like, dad, I'm just with Karen. He's, he's like, he lives in Derby and he supports Derby. And my dad's also like a massive Derby football fan. Yeah. I was and them two were just that. having a chit chat, like getting carried away on the phone. Yeah. Um, and Karen was like, yeah, you know, probably see you around at some point. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It's so, so my ex-husband, like I told you, was from Nottingham yeah. and him and Karen used to always like bust each other's balls about football yeah for yeah, sure you guys are like very devoted to your to your oh, football, football over there. fans yeah <laughs> and then it was funny because i was sat at the um having family dinner later that day just filmed with kieran 
And I was like, oh, I need to put something on Instagram. And my dad was like, I says, but I want to do something about football. And my dad said, oh, caption it, you've just been rammed. Because <laughs> like Derby, the Derby County also classed himself as rams. Yeah. And my dad was like, yeah, so you've just been rammed. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that. That's so yeah. amazing. So what advice would you give to girls on OnlyFans who are looking to find a way to market themselves to stand out from the crowd? Um, you've got to be interested. Do you know what I mean? Like no one wants a wank over boring content. Mm -hmm. um, it's just finding a niche and understanding, I guess, the industry. And like, it is hard. Like, there's so many other girls I still work with and are friends with, and they're like, fuck, I just can't find a niche. I just, I can't get it to take off. And I think it's just having something different, having something to offer that other people aren't, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, really, it's all, uh, you sound very driven by marketing. Yeah. And that's a thing, like, being a sex worker and, and making a living online in the way that you do is yeah. you have to be really keyed into marketing because that's that's what it is, yeah. you know? And all sex workers are independent entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. small business owners. Like I say this all the time. Yeah. Like, it's actually not as easy as people think it is. Like, no. oh, you know, so many people are like, oh, I can just show my feet on OnlyFans and make all this money. It's like, mm. Yeah, I'm just gonna like, I get the comment <clears throat> all the time is you only have what you earn because you're like, because you post sex tapes. It's mm -hmm. like, you only have that because you do OnlyFans. It's like, you go and post a sex tape then and see how much money it earns you. Yeah. Because it doesn't. You can't yeah. just post a sex tape. There's got to be more to it. Like. People don't just go on OnlyFans. Like people have got to subscribe. They've got to put their bank details in. Like it's a commitment from the subscribers. So it's got to be worthwhile. And just uploading some shitty sex tape ain't going to get you anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming oh, on. Thank this you. has been really, really fun. <laughs> I do have some extra questions for yes. you from my Patreon members. So if that's okay, we're going to do a special mm -hmm. segment, a little QA for them. Um, and then in the meantime, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes. Yeah, so my name is Bonnie Blue. My Instagram is Bonnie underscore Blue underscore XO. Um, Twitter, that one's a lot more interesting, <laughs> is Bonnie Blue underscore XOXO. And I'm sure you'll find the rest on there. And then yes. when is your next, uh, wh where should fans um, find themselves if uh, they want to participate in your next? Yes. So the next one is Freshers in September. So if you want to fuck me for free on camera, um, anywhere in the UK, I tend to post like TikToks and Instagram posts beforehand of like where I'm going. So where you can come and meet me. Question actually that I, that I forgot yeah. to ask. Do you have to be like a certain age? Do you have to be 18? Or do you just like under like... 20 something or yeah so it's just like the stunts i've done have had like a certain age group like spring break they tend to be like i don't know 21 to like 24 sort of okay. thing so like i would fuck anyone at any age it's just the stunts i've done to get publicity and get attention right. have been like freshers schoolies and stuff right. so if like a 60 year old writes you you're like yeah you don't really yeah, fit well, I that walked around, <laughs> yeah i walked around santa monica yes so the sign said like bonk me for free and let me film it and loads you of guys. You are so brave. Oh yeah. my God. And it's like, these guys approach me anything from like 19 up into, well, there's this one guy like in a wheelchair um, and like his daughter came up and said, can I, you know, can my dad take a photo with you and stuff? And he honestly looked like he was on his deathbed, bless him. But I was like, yeah, of course, like, of course you can. I'm like, if he'd have asked for a blowjob, I'd have been like, I'm done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so no, like any age group, it's just the stunts I've done recently have just been. Yeah, yeah it has um, to fall into that category. It just yeah, but I, I do tend to walk around. I did it in London, Cardiff and Santa Monica yesterday. Walk around with a sign saying like, you know, fuck me for free and anyone can approach me basically goes all guys wow i love it i love it i would never have the fucking balls to do that ever in my <laughs> life all right well thank you guys so much for watching mm -hmm. and uh you can find me at holly randall on instagram and on twitter or x uh, if you want to support this podcast and watch these interviews live as well as get access to bonus content such as this bonus q a we're going to do go to patreon.com slash holly randall unfiltered go to hollylinks.com for access to all of my platforms. Um, I've actually joined a couple of new ones. I obviously have an OnlyFans. Um, I also joined FanView and I joined Sex Panther, which has been really interesting. Have you tried that platform? No, I've not heard of that. It's um, it's basically like a texting, like like texting like and also texting video service. chat. Oh, and, okay. And phone service. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's like a nicer way to like interact with my fans. Yeah. Like I do mostly texting. I do some phone calls and mm -hmm. video calls. It's kind of not really my yeah i'm not that unless you want to talk about like work and stuff not, i don't know I'm, <laughs> I'm not all that brave i don't people know like i don't do much i'm very tame yeah. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I'm on there. So if you're if you're on, just drop me a line because I actually really enjoyed like talking to people through that platform. I find it very um, very user and creator friendly. Yeah, so. entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been really nice. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>